Welcome to the Customer Experience Improvement Program for Enterprise PKS. We're excited to share these examples of reports that participants in the enhanced level of the program will receive. The consumption report shows pot consumption over time across all PKS clusters and environments. The y-axis in this graph reflects concurrent pods and the x-axis reflects time. Each box in this graph is a cluster and the height of the box reflects the number of pods running on the cluster. Each color represents a PKS environment. So if you see multiple boxes that are the same color, these are all clusters that were created on the same environment. We can see here that we have a couple of long running clusters on the pink and the brown environments. And we have many more that came online more recently in August. You can also see overall consumption has gone up over time. You can filter this view by PKS environment if for some reason you want to exclude certain environments, maybe they're lab or test environments that you're not interested in monitoring, you can do so. You can also adjust the time span. The cluster heartbeats report gives you a bird's eye view of the PKS versions running on all of your clusters over time. Here we have a list of clusters and they're grouped by PKS environment. On the x-axis we have time and each of those little circles is a heartbeat that was received from the cluster at a given point in time. The color on each of these dots represents the version that was running on the cluster at a given point in time. So this cluster started out running version 1.3.6 it was upgraded to version 1.4.0, upgraded again to version 1.4.1, and it finally ended up at version 1.4.2. Down below, we have the newer clusters that started out at version 1.5 and stayed on version 1.5. I also want to point out that these dots are sized by the number of pods running on them, so the thicker lines represent clusters with a higher pod volume than the thinner lines. We see an example of that here with this cluster that gradually increases in size over time. Like the previous view, you can filter out data from installations that you're not interested in seeing in this view, and you can also adjust the time range. Next, we'll take a look at cluster creation and how often it succeeds or fails on each of the PKS environments at this customer. Every time a cluster is created on PKS, an event is sent to the PKS telemetry server. The green lines on this graph indicate the number of successful create cluster events on a particular environment, and the red lines indicate the number of unsuccessful create cluster events on that environment. You'll want to pay close attention to this view to look at environments on which cluster creation failures are common, since that could be a sign of a misconfigured API. In the previous view, we looked at the status of those create cluster events. In this view, we're looking at the duration of the create cluster events. On the y-axis, we have the duration in minutes, and on the x-axis, we have the number of VMs, which is a simple sum of the number of masters and the number of workers on that cluster. You should expect a roughly linear correspondence between duration and number of VMs. So what you should really be looking for in this view are outliers, if a smallish cluster with not a lot of VMs takes a really long time to create, that's something that you're going to want to do some deeper debugging on. The green dots represent successful create cluster events, and the red dots represent unsuccessful create cluster events, just like the last graph. For the most part, we can see that the unsuccessful create cluster events cluster around the bottom of this graph, which means that they aired out pretty quickly, which is good. Well, we do have one case where it took a really long time to error out. It was a lot of VMs on that cluster, so it probably errored out partway through that operation. In the last couple of views, we've looked at the proportion of unsuccessful create cluster events, and we've also looked at the duration associated with them. What this view gives you is a ranked list of errors that were encountered while attempting to create clusters. As we can see, the most common error type here is the pre-start script error, followed by CPI errors, timeout errors, and finally, other or uncategorized errors. The last and final view that I'm going to show you gets at the question of what are my users running on top of PKS? What this view shows you is a ranked list of container images that are running on PKS. They're ranked by the number of pods that are running each of these container images. As we can see, the top three in this list tied with five pods running each of them are the Prometheus node exporter, 
the metal load balancer speaker image, and the Postgres container image. This starts to help you understand the types of workloads your users are running on Kubernetes. And it also gives you a head start with respect to auditing and compliance types of use cases. That's all for this video, but there's much more data that we can share with you. If you're interested, reach out and opt in to the enhanced level of the Customer Experience Improvement Program. We look forward to working with you. Bye for now.